In today's lesson, we'll be creating a React app and then implementing Firebase using Firestore and Firebase authentication. We'll also use Rx Fire for an observable to pass the data from Firestore and consume that within our application. One assumption that I'm making in this video is that you're already familiar with Firebase and how to use it in JavaScript. So I'll add a card up here in YouTube so that if you have any questions, you can refer to one of my other videos. If you haven't heard of RxFire yet, it's a JavaScript library that you can use within any JavaScript application or framework. This library was built by David East after a lot of learnings that happened during the Angular Fire 2 creation. Jeff Delaney also has a great video on how to implement this using Stencil.js. So let's dive into the app. It's a very simple app where we're going to sign in, which will use the Firebase auth. And then once you're signed in, you're allowed to add new cat facts, which jumps out to an API to pull in the fact. That fact, once it's added, if it's yours, we'll get a cat heart eyes as representing your cat fact, and then we'll sign back out. Simple as that. To create a React application, we're gonna use a CLI command called create React app. You can download this. I'll add a link in the description so that you can put the tool onto your uh, operating system. Once you run Create React App, you can provide it a project name. It'll run through a lot of the installations that are required, uh, including Webpack and a lot of other items. If you're new to creating React applications, I want to show you around a little bit. The main folder um, is public, and that's your first entry point. So you'll have index.html, and the only thing in here that you really care about is this div as root. What's going to happen is the app.js file will be the first JavaScript piece that will be included. And that looks for the root div and bootstraps this whole application onto that. So you'll notice document.get element by ID root and it will apply the React DOM render directly to that. From there on out, your app.js will be the source of your entire application going forward. I also want to start setting up a nice little structure that I like to present in a Firebase app. So Firebase.js is kind of a key file that we'll start to use. So we're going to put that equal with the app.js file. Past that though, there's going to be a lot of components in React. So we create a folder called components and we're going to add a few different items in here. One being add cat. Now, if we're to jump back over to our Firebase.js, we need a couple of dependencies to get started. So we're going to do npmi, and we're going to add Firebase as well as RxFire to our application. Now, Firebase.js will become our main Firebase file that will access all of the packages and the instantiation that we need. So including Firebase, we'll make that our export default. After that, we will include the Firebase app. We'll need the app, which is the initialized version of Firebase, and we can pass that to our authorization so that we can set up our auth constant as well as our Firestore, and that way we have an instance of our Firestore. We'll path, pass both those out as optional exports, and then we'll also set up our Rx Fire side to this. And what Rx Fire is going to allow us to do is check on our auth state and send that back as a logged in observable. The key here is that we can do this one time and everywhere else we wanna check on logged in. It just is an observable that we can subscribe to. I'll touch on all of this more throughout the lesson, but I just wanted to show the main Firebase file to start with. Now, if you're brand new to React, don't get now, if you're brand new to React, don't get too scared off by that Firebase.js file. I'm going to jump into a couple simple things here. What you're going to notice is that I'm going to import instructions, which are the picture and also the instructions beside it, into a component called instructions. Um, notice that if you're changing the app.js file from the main one, we're going to actually we're going to use the class-based method for including the rendering on a component. And all we have to do is import instructions and add them into our main app.js. So in our instructions file, it's just simple HTML with an image and then a div with a bunch of uh, ULLIs. 
It's probably a good time at this point to start up our web development server. You can fire that up by running npm space start, and that will actually run the React Script start command. If you take a look here, you'll see the image and all of the instructions that are coming out at the top of the page. The next component we're going to add is the addcat or addcat fact uh, component. And how we do this is import that from our components addcat and then just place a HTML tag for addcat in our app.js. Let's jump over. If you haven't created addcat, go ahead and do that under components. We always start off every React component by adding the class and extending react.component. For this one, all we want to do is return a button that's going to allow us to add a cat fact. Now this will be the first time that we're actually using a onclick for the HTML side and it's got JSX syntax. So you do a open curly brace and a close and it's going to call this function that we're going to create called add cat fact. So we'll place that in the top of our class and you can see here that it equals and then parens and then the arrow function and that's just setting up a function to pass into a variable. So at this point, what we're going to do is call the fetch method. Um, so unlike Angular, if you're coming from that world where they have HTTP client, fetch is built into the browser. And we're going to call this cat fact uh, API, which is an open API. We have to pass it through due to cores, but just forgive me on that part and uh, forget the uh, blob.json. But we're going to take that over to a value. And at this point, we'll go ahead and check out the console on our current app. So you'll see here we have our new add cat fact button and when we click it, it goes out and grabs the data from the API and console logs it. Now the next key to this is going to be adding this to Firestore. We want to take any of that data and just pipe it back into um, our own database. So you'll remember we set up our firebase.js file and we're able to export a Firestore. So what we're going to do here is call out to the Firestore collection called cat facts. We're then going to add our values um, from the cat fact API as well as um, what I have here is user ID. We're going to get to that point, so I'll take it out for now, um, as well as the cat fact date. So our, our current date right now, and that way we can kind of keep things uh, in sequence. And then after that, we're going to pipe out What's going to happen here is we'll pass out the reason code because the way I have the database set up, unless you're you, you cannot add a cat fact, and that's the backend security. So you see that here. You must be logged in. When it says C console, after you hit OK, you'll get the error message because I've console logged that out. The reason that you're getting this, we'll take a look at our Firebase uh, Firestore.rules. In here, I have everything locked down. This is the way I like to start all my Firebase projects. In the cat facts um, rule set, you'll see that anyone's allowed to read it. So that's why you'll see cat facts without having to log in. However, in order to write, you must have a UID passed in the data, as well as the UID that is in the data must also equal to the UID that you're currently logged in with. Now that we've added data to Firebase Firestore, we're going to use RxFire to use Firebase authentication to allow our app to be logged in. So what we need to do is create a new component called signin that will provide us the buttons that we need to trigger the Firebase authentication with. So same as before, we'll create a new component called signin. We'll add it to our app.js file. We're going to pass in a few props over to sign in. User is going to be the current state of the user from Firebase. We'll also provide a auth handler function, which will be a generic function to update the current state of the user. We'll pass that over to the set user function, which will allow um, setting of the state of that user. So if we go back down to our sign in, we can take a look at how we're going to pass in the state for user, the auth handler, and the set user function all into the sign in button. These are all passed as props. They don't have to be objects, they can be functions as well. 
So now we'll take a step and go into the signin.js component. What this component is looking to do is provide us with both the button for sign in as well as a button for sign out. First, we're gonna have to import Firebase and the app so that we can do a few things. Notice here again, I just wanna enforce and drive home. We're gonna check this props user and that was passed in as a prop as it, as it states here. So when we check that, you're either gonna have to sign in or you're gonna be signed in and we're gonna welcome you and offer a sign out button. So on our first button, where it says this dot sign in, we will take a, and create a Firebase auth, Google auth provider, and we will use that to sign in. And then once we've signed in, we're gonna use that auth handler and the auth handler will update the user. We also have to provide a sign out function. We'll use the wait command here to wait for it to finish. And then we'll update the set user with the current set state of null. So that way our app understands that that user is not in state at that time. We can check this out. We can click sign in, pick your user. It should sign you in. Our buttons flip to sign out. One issue that we're gonna run into at this point is if we restart the browser, it's going to reload the app and we'll lose all of our state. The state is only held while the application is up and running. In order to fix this, we're gonna add one of React's lifecycle methods called component did mount. Inside of this, what we're gonna do is provide that logged in observable that we are passing out of the Firebase um, Rx fire and where we checked for the logged in uh, user. So you'll see here in the observable that we've subscribed to, it only emits when the user is available. That's what the filter did in firebase.js. And once we have that, we can say, okay, this auth handler, go ahead and update the uh, current state for the user. We also have a little extra function in here just to store user data, destructuring of the user object so that we can just pull out the four main fields that people typically use. And we update Firestore by uh, passing to the Firestore collection users the user ID and then the information that was passed. So I wanna jump back and talk about the logged in observable real quick because this is the first key part of Rx Fire. If we jump into our firebase.js, you'll see this observable and it was created based on this auth state. Auth state is from Rx Fire, which provides back an observable of the current state of authorization. You pass into it the auth instance and what we can do is use the pipe because it's observable as well as filter, which is an RxJS operator. And what the filter is gonna do is say, anytime there's not a user in here, don't emit anything. And that's how in our app.js, even if this came back with a auth instance, we're saying just ignore it until a user shows up. So now that we have all of that set up, we can refresh the app and you'll see it blinks in sign in button and then back to sign out for a second. If we go ahead and sign out physically and try it again, you'll see that it sticks. Now that we have authentication working, we need to shore up our add cat button. Um, we, we're going to pass in the user into AdCat and then we can make some decisions on whether or not to show the button inside of the AdCat.js. Uh, now that we have a user in our props, we're going to add that user to our Firebase Firestore object. So this.props.user.uid um, will add to that insert or update, I should say. And then down here, we're gonna change around the structure of how we're passing back the button. We're gonna set a variable um, to create the button. So we'll pass back null if there is no user and essentially the user isn't logged in. Otherwise, we will pass back the add cap button uh, just as we were before based on that user. The next part in this lesson is adding RX Fire for Firestore, which makes me the most happy. So the next item up is our listcatfacts.js. We're gonna create a new component for that and we're gonna add it right under the addcat button. 
Um, we'll also pass into the props the user for this as well so we can determine whether or not we show the heart dies. Now inside of ListCat Facts, we're just going to do a skeleton basically of a React component and we'll notice that Firestore Collections Cat Facts does indeed show up so it's working in our app.js. The next step is to import the collection data and Firestore um, imports from Firebase. I just want to show you again Collection data is from RX Fire Firestore and we're passing it out. I like to keep these things centralized so I don't have to import too many different things um, into each JS file, but essentially we're just passing that through. You could import it directly from RX Fire. Next step is to set our state of catfax as an empty array. We'll then set our reference uh, using Firestore to our catfax collection. This is the part where we start to use the collection data from RX Fire, and we're going to pass it the reference and order that by our cat fact date um, descending, which was in our add cat. If we take a look at it, the object we actually placed this as just a new date parameter. So in collection data, you can also pass the uh, an ID of any. Uh, name you want to call it. So for ours, we're going to call that cat fact ID and that will pass back the document ID from Firebase. As this is a observable, we will next subscribe to the observable. Um, and let's just take a look at this point if we can console log and see anything. You may have to add a few cats if you're checking out your own. If you're on uh, my database still, which should be allowed, um, you can see that there are multiple cats at this point in your console. If you take a look, when you click add cat fact, it will actually show the fetch message and then automatically update Firestore and spit out a new array. Now we'll go back into the list cat facts and we'll start um, setting up the state. So we'll pass the cat facts uh, array as it shows up from the observable and we'll set state. Based on that state, we're going to want to set a map up so that we can iterate through all of the cat facts that come. We're going to put the if at this point to say if the props user that was passed in matches the user ID of the cat fact, go ahead and put a heart for the eyes. If not, just have the smiley cat. And that is all listed out just as a div that shows the my cat, uh, my fact, sorry smiley face and then the text of the original uh, Firestore entry. If we open up the browser again, you should now see a list of cat facts appearing. Uh, the ones that are created by yourself should show the heart eyes on them and the ones that uh, are not should just show the smiley faces. As you add them, you should get heart ones at the top. If this thing goes viral and there's a million people updating, you might not jump to the top. Once you sign out, you'll notice that all of the faces go back to just smiley and no hearts. If I log in as a different user, they will flip. So the last one in the list, uh, kitten start, should not be mine, therefore no heart face. If I add a new one, it should flip to the hearts once again. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. It's my first of the React series. I hope to do many, many more covering uh, React and Firebase and all things web.